was in Boston in 1846 that modern medicine took a giant leap forward. Surgeons at Massachusetts General Hospital carried out the first public demonstration of surgical anaesthesia, and thereafter operations became a lot less painful for patients. Today MGH is considered to be one of the leading hospitals in the US in terms of both patient care and its cutting edge medical research. I'm James Dacey, a reporter for Physics World, and I'm at MGH to meet the Chief of the Physics Division, Thomas Bordfeldt. Well, yes, this is the ether dome. It's uh, called ether dome because this was where the first patient was treated under anesthesia using ether. And that was more than 100 years ago. Uh, uh, the advantage for the patient is obvious. And, uh, but at that time, as you see in, in, on the picture in, in my back, the treatments were very different from what we, what we do today. And, and also the dress code, as you see, was, was very different. So the MGH it clearly has this very rich history of pioneering new medical techniques. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, first operation under general anesthesia. So in what sense does the physics program here continue this, this tradition? Even on the physics side, there has been a long and rich tradition in developing new technologies that are being used for patient treatments. So there was a group, a lab at M M MGH and at MIT, uh, Gordon Brownell, developed positron emission imaging that later led to the positron emission tomography that's being used in many clinics today. Also the treatment of um, uh, thyroid disease with uh, radioactive iodine was sort of pioneered here. Today the major focus of the physics program at MGH is on the treatment of cancer there is a proton therapy centre which uses the energy of protons to destroy cancer cells. Beams of protons generated at the hospital can be precisely aimed at tumours by causing little harm to the surrounding healthy tissue. Thomas and his team are working to refine the techniques. The physics research at a, at a higher level is, is about um, either inventions, for example, in, in the case of uh, positron emission imaging, it's the invention of the PET imaging technique. But uh, in the case of proton therapy, it's more translation uh, of uh, known technology, I mean, known physics phenomenon at least, proton therapy and dose distributions of proton therapy, to translate that into the clinical environment. Could you perhaps tell me about some of the specific uh, techniques that you've developed here and, and, and how the work you're doing is, is helping to improve these? Yeah, and the, the specific techniques, for example, in the case of, of uh, the determining where the beam stops in the patient, are uh, to use um, physics techniques that follow the trace that, that the proton beam leaves in the patient. While the proton beam goes through the patient, it activates, uh, for example, oxygen-15 and carbon-11 isotopes, and those can be measured with PET scanning. So we also uh, are very much involved in the mathematics of, of treatment planning. So while we try to exploit as much of the physical potential uh, as possible, there's always some trade-off to be made between treating the tumor and sparing the surrounding tissues. It's never 100% perfectly possible. So we develop optimization techniques with mathematicians at MIT, for example, where we try to find the best possible compromise for every individual patient. There has always been a strong academic culture at the hospital. Today, with an annual research budget of nearly 764 million US dollars, MGH conducts the largest hospital-based research program in the US. The busy hospital is not a typical environment for a research scientist. It is true that the environment is different from the typical research environment at the university. Um, you actually feel, uh, sometimes you feel a little bit like an exotic animal having a PhD in, in, in a hospital, you know, so where typically People have MD degrees and, and are nurses and, and, and so forth. And it's also different from, from the uh, um, research environment in the sense that here at the hospital, the primary emphasis is clearly on patient care. So looking ahead, um, I understand that the MGH has now got 
permission to build a second photon therapy tensor. So, I mean, in what sense will that strengthen the um, uh, therapies that you can offer here? There's still a very high demand in proton therapy. So we have one center now with three treatment rooms, but there's more patients that we would like to treat and that require treatments with protons. So one aspect of the new center is to satisfy the increased demand in, in proton therapy. Then it's also the, the second aspect is the um, state-of-the-art technology. Our current proton center is, the design is about 20 years old. And while we try very hard to keep it up to the state of the art by making upgrades and improvements over the years, it's difficult to do that while we also treat patients on a routine basis, of course, every day. So the new center will be uh, advanced from the technology point of view, for example, with high, high, high resolution beam scanning. Do you know yet when the centre will open its doors to the public? I, I'm guessing it's going to cost a, a few dollars as well. So the, um, the plans are to treat the first patient in the new proton centre in about two years, which is a very ambitious goal, we know that, but we think it is, it is doable. And yes, it will cost a few dollars. Just to give you uh, an idea, it will be about 25 million, perhaps. And my um, strong belief and expectation is that in the future, proton therapy will not only be a better option for patient treatments, but also one that is not necessarily more expensive than conventional X-ray treatments.